name is Jenny, and I'm a wife and mom raising two kids. But I used to live a more glamorous life as a TV reporter. I was on the nightly news interviewing pop stars and politicians. So when I said goodbye to TV and hello to motherhood, I suddenly discovered what we moms are up against. We live in a world that tells us to be rich and famous, thin and successful. You know, almost nobody says, oh, oh hey, you're a mom? That's fabulous. But you are fabulous. And I'm here to tell you why. It's the Channel Mom Show, celebrating you with Jenny Dean Schmidt. All righty. I'm really excited about our next guest. She's going to help you be a little more confident with your motherhood. And she's got some great tips for you, too. Jean Blackmer is the publishing manager for Mops International where she designs books specifically for mothers of preschoolers. She's also the author of a book for moms of boys, Boisterous Living, Celebrating Your Loud and Rowdy Life with Sons, which apparently you've got three of those. And she's a regular contributor to Mom Sense Magazine and has written for many other magazines, including Guideposts and Christian Parenting Today. Jean lives right here in Colorado. That's why she's with us live today with her husband, Zane, and their three sons. Welcome, Jean. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're we're really thrilled to have you because I know you're going to have some great advice for moms out there today. <laughs> so why Mom Sense? What need did you see out there that made you write a book that kind of about common sense motherhood and, and helping moms to feel better about their mothering? Mom Sense really was a term that was started by Mops International maybe 15 years ago where we started a radio program with Elisa Morgan. Mm -hmm. And then we started our magazine, which goes out to our 100,000 members. And so the next step, was start having a book and we decided it would be a great time to have a book because we see this idea of moms not feeling super confident in their mothering abilities so the definition of mom sense is really combining your mom intuition and your common sense and mashing those two together and learning you know to trust yourself and do your best as you can as a mom yeah and here is the book i'm going to show it to the camera Thanks. um it looks very easy to read and and i know you've got some examples from other mothers in there and and tips and helping moms feel more confident why do you think moms feel less confident in their mothering what's going on i don't know i mean i think anytime you do something new you have to learn as you grow so that as you have your first baby especially there's a lack of what do I do with this child i've never done this before mm -hmm. i think another thing that our culture is facing that maybe we haven't quite as much before is this abundance of information. Mm -hmm. We're just bombarded mm -hmm. with information. And there's actually been a lot of research even recently that says when you have that many choices, it's harder to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just decide not to decide. Yeah. And there's, yeah. A, there's a book called The Paradox of Choice, Why Less is More. And I think that happens with moms. You're so overwhelmed with all the information that you sure. get that you just kind of go, I don't know what to do. Right. And you may not live as close to your mom or your aunts or people are a little more isolated from the people we would normally go to for advice so well and I think it's an overall cultural change if we think about all the things that are competing for our attention and it's one reason that we have this show is because we think that the celebrity worship that goes on in this country distracts from the things that are really important like family and motherhood um, but I think you know just with career and and the sort of lifestyle that you're supposed to lead and all the interests you're supposed to have and travel and all these kinds of things that are competing for our attention mm -hmm. that maybe sort of in the 17th century a mom was a mom and she that she was pretty prepared to do that because she'd been baking bread and doing things with her own mother for years but now there are a hundred other things vying for her attention so it seems to me that it's part, partly a cultural thing but I, true but I want to get on to some things that you want to talk about mm -hmm. I think you say that moms should kind of rely on their own intuition um, and, and that they don't need to be sort of overwhelmed, that they can say, you know what, this is what I feel is right, or this is what my mom did for me, right? Right. I think that I really want to encourage moms to embrace their instinct. And there is something, there's this mothering intuition that when you become a mom, it's something you discover. Maybe you didn't know you had. Maybe some people, it, they're in tune with it a little more than others. But there's definitely this sense of this intuition that you just know something about your kid. It's really interesting. And it happens to me, a lot and now even with teenagers I'll think about one of my boys and I think oh I need to call him and I'll pick up my phone and he's calling me I mean there's it's kind yeah. of the sixth sense that happens there's this this intuition this gut feeling and I want moms to listen to that and learn to trust that yeah and also combine it with what you know and kind of this common sense sure and I think sometimes yeah. they're encouraged to ignore it yeah <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> exactly and that's really interesting because what one thing I learned when I was writing this book, I wrote a uh, chapter on decision making mm -hmm. and a really, really important part of decision decision making is listening to your feelings. And they did, they, they found this um, guy named Elliot who had to have a brain tumor removed. Mm -hmm. And after his surgery, he could not make decisions. It would take him hours to decide like, 
what toothpaste to use or where to eat. Oh, wow. And so the doctor went and did some more research and found out that the emotional part of his brain had been damaged, so he didn't have feelings. And so the, the outcome of that was, you know, someone who doesn't, a brain who can't feel can't make decisions. So I was encouraged because women are feelers. Yeah. And we've always been taught that decision making has to be so logical and rational. Yeah. But there's a really important piece in there that tells you to listen to your feelings and you'll make a better decision. And we sometimes and I love that. Put, yeah, me too, because I love we that. put that down all the time. Yeah. It's like there may not be a good explanation. You just know it. You yeah. Feel it. Oh, I, yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. You know, if your baby cries, you, a lot of women know. Oh, he's hungry, or he's wet, or he's just cranky, or he's teething. You know, yeah. Where someone else will look at him and go, "Why is your baby crying?" You know, yeah, but sure, you know. Yeah. sure. And and actually, somebody else may not have as much patience for those moments as you do as your own as a mother. Definitely. Um, <laughs> tell tell me about mommy wars and mama dramas. What what are these? Because I'm they're okay. fascinating terms, <laughs> and I'm sure moms would like to know. And 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 how do they navigate these things? Uh, well, in the book, I talk about. I I don't talk about mommy wars that much because I think that they're so divisive that I call them the nonsense. So you kind of have your mom sense nonsense. Mm-hmm. And so those are the things that cause women to really be divisive, whether it's breastfeeding or bottle feeding or homeschooling or public school. Oh, so it's actually mommy wars. Well, we're competing are. against yeah. each other and we're disagreeing with each other. Yes. And, uh, okay. And, but my point in the book is to say, let's, let's not focus on that because I think turning those divisive issues into um, the area of our focus is more, it's really not, as big of an issue as I think maybe the media makes it out to be. Mm Because when I talk to moms, and I get to talk to moms all over, you know, the United States and through um, blogs and everything, I don't see that warlike attitude. I I think it's a vocal minority. So my point in the book really is to say, let's forget that nonsense and really focus on the things where we have much more in common. Yeah. And that's where that learning to accept each other's differences and really figure out what's best for you. Right, right. Because we do do that. You know, did you breastfeed or not breastfeed? Do you work or do you not work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, do you spank or do you not spank? Mm-hmm. That's true. That's, That's true. Right. We do do that. And what are mama yeah. dramas? Mama dramas. These are really fun. This is a little section in the book where um, we talk about everyday things that happen. Like, let's say you're at a play group and your son bites another <laughs> kid's hand. And so you have this mama drama. What do you do? And so we have different questions like bite him back. You know, we have like joke, you know, funny answers and then the moms can kind That's of That's what my husband would say, by yeah, the way. Yeah, back, just not too hard, you know, or whatever. Or you say, you know, oh, I'm, that really hurt your friend. You put all the attention on the friend. So we kind of give different ideas of what do you do when you're in this kind of mama drama? Mm-hmm. And, then, uh, and then to really think about it and to have some discussion around that. Sure. And to not say there's one right, right way to handle it. But there's a lot of different ways and you can be creative and you can figure that out too for yourself. Yeah. And so are. those are fun. We call them everyday mama dramas and it can be all sorts of Oh, things. there are. I mean, like yeah. in my own life, my, I went downstairs one day and my kids had gotten bored. So they were hammering on the patio door with hammers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what, huh. what, how is that a good thing to do? I mean, unfortunately they didn't break through or, you know, stripping in the safe way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I yeah, love a those temper things. tantrum. Yeah. What do you do? Here's your everyday yeah. mama drama. And yeah. uh, I had a, my son, we had a trampoline and they decided to put our basketball hoop right up next to the trampoline. Oh, yeah. And so, so they, they were, yeah, so they yeah. could do really right. cool dunks, you know. But he had a hammer in his hand. He was trying to do something Hammers, with it. yeah, a theme here. Yeah, yeah, so he was hitting it with his hammer, and he dropped the hammer on his head. <laughs> and he had to come in, he had this big gash, and he was trying to tell me, you dropped a hammer on your head while you were jumping on the trampoline, you know. To dunk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So right on. They do. You just have, that's something you learn. And your mom sense, that's where you really have to kick it in and say, what do I do here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do I do with this? And they are funny. I, don't know. I mean, <laughs> I bet every mom out there has hilarious stories. I know mm-hmm. I do about what unfolds in mama dramas. Yeah. All righty. Let's talk about how you really want to empower moms to mm-hmm. be the best they can be. I love that. And I want yeah. s- s- at least one mom out there today, and hopefully more than that, to feel empowered by you. You really want them to be confident as mothers and to help mm-hmm. them to have confident children. Do you have one or two tips that, that would would carry them to that place? Because I'm not even sure what that looks like. Yeah, I mean, because we're all learning and we, yeah. all, we all do make mistakes. So nobody's going to be the perfect mom. But I think the confidence that, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. And he has given you those children for you to raise. And, he's, you know, you're the perfect person to do that. And those that's why specific you're children, yes. Those specific children. And you as a parent are there for them. And just to trust that 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 is your purpose and you're good at it. You know what you're doing Mm -hmm. to listen to your instincts, to know you can grow and you can learn Mm -hmm. and you grow with each kid. But just that embrace, embrace your role, embrace that 
and know that you can do it. Yeah. yeah. And and to take the advice and the books and so on in moderation. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. we want them to listen to the show, <laughs> but but to do those things in moderation to say, "Hey, you know, I think I'll watch the show or I think I'll read this book," but not to feel like they have to, you know, implement every single thing that they've heard. Um, and to go back to trust some things that, that God has given them to raise those specific children. I agree with that. Right. So what about boys? You have three of them and I have one. Shelly, you have one. One. Yes. Yeah. I really have four if you count my husband. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And a dog, male dog. My husband's really <laughs> mature. So I'm not one of those women that says that. He's just, he's <laughs> such the adult. So yeah. um, well, probably because he's a high school principal, you have oh, to yeah. be the adult in that situation. <laughs> um, any basic suggestions for mothers raising boys who may feel certain frustration um, when they don't understand them or they can't embrace their, their their smelliness or their <laughs> yeah. or their loudness or whatever it is. Yeah, I, um, that's a really good question because when I speak at different mom groups and I'm going to talk on raising boys, there's it, the, there's always a wait list because moms do feel this desperation. Like I don't know what to do. Is my boy normal? Because you're dealing with you know your girl. So I just try to encourage them to let boys be boys because tip you know not all boys are like this or all girls are like this but typically boys are more aggressive they're louder they take risks more they're physical you know mm-hmm. i mean I, as a girl i've never had an urge to tackle my best friend <laughs> you know there's just things we don't get we're like i don't get it why is he doing that but to really just say it's okay and try to you know learn about boys let them be boys they are normal and my other huge encouragement would be to hang out with some other moms of boys yeah 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 so you can see okay I, i'm not the, i'm not alone there's other moms with boys are grappling with the same issues and you can help each other yeah and i have mm-hmm. a friend or two who has only boys and and they just they're great about it they say oh <laughs> you know they, they tackle with them uh-huh. and i love that it's such a great analogy mm-hmm. shelly have i ever tackled you no i don't think so mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe we should try that <laughs> it's so true though it's, that, so it's, true. It's, it's automatic come mm-hmm. in and they start hurting each other yeah it's just part of the deal right yeah. josh or do you not do, you not do not hurt anybody? I don't hurt anybody. Oh. You have a brother, John. <laughs> okay, we, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, briefly, the importance of love, joy, and critical thinking all together. I, yeah. I think we sometimes lose sight of these things when we get overwhelmed. How do we get back in touch with just being logical in our thinking, reaching for love and joy, enjoying those moments? Oh, so... That's a hard to give a brief answer it to, is, but it is. you know, the book is kind of divided into three parts. So the first part is discovering your mom sense, kind of unwrapping that gift that you have. The second part is practicing your mom sense. And I think that's what you're talking about. Like yeah. Really putting into practice the, the qualities that you want to have in your home. So building it on a foundation of love. I mean, if you're making your decisions and, and moving forward out of love, you're going to be yeah. building the kind of home life you want. The yeah. same with joy, you know, having, I think having a sense of humor is key. For a family, because families are funny, yeah. you know, and you have to have that that sense of humor and even the sense of joy, even when things aren't going great. There's still this sense of joy in your home. And how do you so. how do you we have you know thirty seconds, but yeah. how do you get back to that on a bad day when things yeah. are going wrong and your and your son is not happy with you and and you know the the dinner is burned and maybe you're in a fight with your husband and et cetera et cetera. Yeah. Um, how do you get back to that love it takes some intentionality and it may be you know watching a movie or doing something for yourself really where you you're feeding your soul and out of that you can refreshing yourself yeah and then you can bring that back into your family i I get i lock myself in the prayer closet yeah and kids they'll pound on the door i'm getting some love back in my heart leave me alone yeah Yeah. okay tell us contact information if someone wants to get the book and how to get a hold of you um the best place to get the book would be at mop shop so it's mopshop.org, and I can be found on that website as well, or my own website is jeanblackmer.com. B-L-A-C-K-M-E-R. Awesome. Jean, you're wonderful. Thank you. Thank I you know for having me. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You are listening to the Channel Mom Show, where we are celebrating you on Mile High Sports Radio, AM 1510, FM 93.7. I am your host, Jenny Dean Schmidt. We hope that you'll come back, because we have coming up somebody who's just going to be wonderful for you, talking about beauty tips and tricks that involve what she calls real beauty. A realistic approach to looking and feeling good. Christina Stumbaugh next. Say what you need to say.